there was always something missing, I feel. Um, I'm not sure something missing, but just something that didn't feel quite right. Um, I just thought that the way I was when I was sober before I started to perform my drug career was um, that this is just how, how people feel. I, I hear it more and more often these days. It was um, taking drugs actually caused ease and comfort for me, um, where I kind of felt at peace as such, because um, I always struggled with attention and ADHD and stuff like that. And, and this would take me away from that, it would take me away from from where I was, the fact that if I did or didn't have a girlfriend at the time, it would take me away from whatever I wanted to be taken away from. And that was, and that started, I started realising midweek, when I was using at the weekends, midweek, that this being so was rubbish and it was, and it didn't come to me naturally. I was, I didn't know, I didn't really understand who I was when I was sober and when I was at the weekends and partying, I knew exactly who I was and I knew exactly who I wanted to be. And unfortunately for me, that was, uh, that took me into addiction. And I didn't know until I ended up coming to the recovery that that's what that unease and discomfort was, was the fact that there was always that lingering addiction that I didn't even know and I hadn't sparked off yet. <clears throat> so when I did find it, and I felt that ease and comfort, but it was very, very hard to keep it as a steady thing and it just spiralled out of control and it happens, it happens really quickly. And it's happened to me, I've been in and out a few times. Over three years, I was a pro racing driver, um, racing at the Pinnacle of British Motorsport. Um, European motorsport, um, which was obviously to 99% of guys who are into, into cars, that's, that's just what you want to do. Um, I was racing against the greatest, racing against some really, really fast people, some really, really famous people. And, and within 14 months of me setting foot on my first racetrack, I was sat inside a £500,000 race car, racing against the people who I grew up um, with my heroes as such, um, family, friends, ev everything that I had went into me becoming this celebrity um, and it just got too much. Um, it took me um, it took me quite a while to realise that. I was like, this is what I want, this is what I, I loved. Um, and uh, again, it just took me out of who I was. Using for me, was, uh, it, was, it was readily available. Um, so I'd find myself the night before practice, the night before qualifying, the night before race night, sitting at five o'clock in the morning. And I'm doing tracking tools and I'd still be sitting there using, still haven't washed, still drinking. Um, and on numerous occasions I got breathalyzed and I'd failed. Um, and had they had drug, drug testing facilities, that would also fail that. And it was uh, short-lived. Um, <clears throat> my, my last race, my last race weekend, and I'd been using heavily, um, and I had a very, very big crash, um, which I don't believe was linked to that, but obviously you can't say it wasn't. Um, and that ended, my, that ended my professional racing career, was that crash, because it was a choice of pay the damage or leave the, or leave the championship and that was it and that was the last time I was out. It was imperative to me that I succeeded and I succeeded drastically. Um, there was things that I wanted in life that I wanted for her and I wanted for my daughter. Um, and if they didn't happen and happened now, I was gonna it was gonna drive me demented. And it was always I think it's a pride thing for me. Um, being a guy it's quite hard to pick up the phone and say you're struggling. And I think that's what set it off for me was I wasn't phoning people and I wasn't expressing how I feel. Um, which is something that's really, really big in recovery is you need to be able to, especially guys, because girls phone each other. I know my missus still does it, my missus is, is um, 28 and she still phones her friends and says stuff that's stressing her out and her phones on mum and says stressing her out. But guys have got that whole thing of bravado and, and pride getting in the way of actually mas of actually speaking about how you feel. So obviously guys' suicide rates are scarily high and I think that's a big problem is not being able or not feeling able to speak to people. And I think that's where it took me back in back to using was the fact that I just bottled all this stuff up inside and the only thing that I could speak to to calm that was using. Um, a, a couple of times I've actually um, felt quite suicidal um, and no matter what's going on in my life around at the time it clouds the addiction and the worry and the feeling of um, utter uselessness really is uh, it clouds your judgement as to actually the things the things that are going right in your life you can have 20 things going right in your life but that one thing that's going to be one that's sticking in your head and it's not speaking it gets gets me into the situation where I feel suicidal um, and I think that's where the spiralling out of control thing happened it was all that pressure and again I'm uh, not voicing the way I felt we say that this, we say this is a talking illness if we don't talk we're not going to beat it um, and that's just the way it is for me um, recovery was for me was was almost do this or you you you've got nothing left you you'll have nothing left in your life um, 
it was a family friend um, who I didn't. I had no idea there was such things as, as meetings or recovery meetings or places to go and chat about your feelings. I had no idea. This. I was completely naive about it. I would Google stuff when I was out of my mind and go, right, I'm looking at that tomorrow. And then the next day I wouldn't look it up. And I was told about um, getting into meetings um, and the recovery. And I thought, I, th- I heard the word God mentioned a lot. And I, that was one thing that kind of held me back. And it held, holds a lot of people back. Um, but it doesn't have to be God or a Christian God or anything. It's just be a God of your understanding. And it was when that was said to me um, that I took it seriously. Because they said it can be anyone you can think of. When you close your eyes and say God to yourself, who do you see? And nine times out of ten, it's not a Christian God. Or to a lot of people to me, it was... Um, it was my grandfather. I could see him sitting at the other end of the table, and he was just like well, waving his finger in front of my face, and um, and that's so that's who I speak to. And in recovery, I've I, I've I've developed this life where I always say people you hear people saying a lot in recovery, oh I've got my life back. To me, I didn't have a life before. It might sound nice, might sound nice with the race cars and the race cars and the celebrity life. That wasn't that wasn't what I wanted. I want a nice family. I want a small family. I want to have loving friends around me, loving family around me. And because I'm in recovery, I've now got that. Um, I've got friends that I would trust with my life that I've only met four months ago. I now employ two people from recovery as well, and I would trust my life with them, which I need to on a daily basis being on boats. Um, and it's just, it's a, literally a life beyond my wildest dreams. Um, just my bonds with my daughter, being able to walk in from, from work and pick her up and give her a cuddle and play with her. I couldn't do that four or five months ago. I would come in and I would try and go and run a bath or something just to stay away. Um, and now my relationship with my parents, um, my fiance, my f- the, f- the people I've got in my life in recovery, it's it's unbelievable. And I never I've never understood the word clarity, and I do now from being in recovery that I can literally see the difference in the people's lives around me. Not even so much my own. If I forget my own life, the clarity in other people's lives at the moment is it's un- it's so good to see it. And um, we can do so much things. Before it was right, we can't do that because we've got no money. And now we can do we can go on holidays and. Um, and I can help my friends and I can actually help people that I call my friends was before I said I had friends it wasn't it was drug, drug using associates um, but right now it's I haven't ever experienced this this love that I've been given or been shown since I came into recovery